Every day on There's No Taste Like Home, Chef Gino De Campo will take three family cooks and the recipes that have been passed down through their families from generation to generation, out of the home and into a professional kitchen. Come on, let's get cooking. Together, they'll serve up their treasured dishes to paying customers, and the winning dish, judged by Gino, will be added to the restaurant's menu for a month. Remember, this is your great-grandmother's recipes. To prove that there is no taste like home. On today's show, one family's unique version of shepherd's pie that's had an extra ingredient added to it with each generation. My nan's recipe was okay. with, with lamb, then she so added I'm... the beef, and then I added the pork. A delicious recipe for meatballs that has a truly worldwide heritage. This is a recipe that has crossed many generations, several continents from Italy to New York to England. And a stunning fish dish that originated from a traditional Vietnamese fishing village nearly 200 years ago. Because I come from a fishing village back in Vietnam called um, Phan Thi. It's uh, Phan Thi. Phan Thi. Phan Thi. Phan Thi. Okay, okay. And Phan Thi. Very funky. <laughs> I'm Gino da Campo, and today on There's No Taste Like Home, I'll be uncovering three secret family recipes from three home cooks. I'm in the home of Jelly Deals, Pie and Mash, and Bubbling Squeak. Yes, whole blimey governor, I'm in London town. Over 150 years ago, here in Auburn, Londoners used to come to buy their fruit and veg in the very famous Fleet Market. It was a long time ago, but amazingly, some of the recipes featured on today's show, they were being cooked at around the same time. But now, back in the 21st century, they will be cooked and served in this amazing London restaurant. Let's meet today's cooks. Lauren Pecorino is making the Pecorino family meatballs. Anna Xiao is making Vietnamese caramelized clay pot salmon. And Scott Malion is making the Star Family's three meat shepherd's pie. Okay, guys, welcome to a professional kitchen. How do you feel? Great. 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 It's cool, is it? It's great. I mean, it's a little bit small. This is a typical London restaurant kitchen. It's small, it's compact, it's gonna get really, really hot. Are you excited? Yeah. Are you looking forward? Yeah. So get back to your station and let's get cooking, okay? Let's find out how our first cook makes her dish at home. Lauren Pecorino is a 48-year-old university lecturer originally from New York, but who now lives in Hampstead, London. She brought with her a taste of home with a family recipe for meatballs that was first cooked by her Italian ancestors over 100 years ago. In the 1930s, Lauren's grandmother left Italy for the bright lights of New York, taking the recipe with her. This recipe I have in front of me is actually my mom's recipe, which she hand wrote on the back of a card that says, thinking of you. The recipe is kept close by so that it reminds me of home and also so I don't forget any major ingredients. To cut a small white onion, one clove of garlic, finely chopped, fresh parsley. This meat is um, ground beef, ground pork, and ground veal. I'm next going to grate some Pecorino Romano cheese. My surname is Pecorino, so it's one of my favorite cheeses. The egg helps bind all the ingredients. The next thing I'm going to add is the special ingredients, which is some Californian raisins and some pine nuts. There's a story behind adding pine nuts that I remember from my childhood, and that is my grandmother only put a few pine nuts in the meatballs, and we had uh, almost a competition, me and my cousins, trying to find the most in our meatballs, and so there was a little bit of competition there. It was a lot of fun. So now I'm going to shape the meatballs, fry them gently until they're golden brown. I'm just going to prepare a, a quick spaghetti sauce, add a clove of garlic, two cans of chopped tomato, one leaf of fresh basil, one bay leaf. I have a wooden fork from my grandmother and I have a wooden spoon from my mom. And the wooden spoon I use to turn the spaghetti sauce. Next I'm going to add the browned meatballs into the sauce and they'll slowly cook in the sauce for about an hour. Today I'm using the farfalli 
But of course, any of the other spaghettis would work as well. Once the pasta has been boiled and drained, then top your pasta with some spaghetti sauce and the dish is ready to be served. That's the Pecorino family meatballs served with farfalle pasta, a delicious dish with Italian origins. No wonder Gino wants to find out more. Tell me a little bit about the recipe, because meatball. I love meatball. I think foods that you cook with your hands are a symbol of love, and so I think meatballs are always about the family and the love that you had with your family. My grandmother learned this recipe from her stepmother, so this originates outside, in, outside of Naples. My grandmother left Naples to come to America in the 30s. And there she brought the recipe and she's made this dish every Sunday for the family. We used to always go there on a Sunday and she taught my mother obviously and it's been passed down to me. And all my cousins cook the same meatballs on a Sunday. The last time I went home, my grandmother uh, was making homemade gnocchi with her hands. She said, don't have this shit, they're not good. You have to fix your salt. Okay, go ahead, no, roll. No, no, no. Do a roll. <laughs> my grandmother will be 99 years old this year. Okay. And she's still cooking her meatballs. And she's still doing meatball. This is a, a recipe that has really crossed many generations, several continents from Italy to New York to England. Okay. And also cultures, because now I'm cooking it here in Britain. What would it mean to you to win today and have this beautiful pasta with meatball, to go on a restaurant menu for a month? I'm doing it in honor of my grandmother that she's going to be 99 years old and still making the meatball, so it would be an honor for her. Now, Lauren, this is what we do in professional restaurants, okay? okay? Now, cook your pasta, salt in boiling water, until very al dente. Okay, you really want to get, look at that. Still, it's, it's kind of half of the way through. Mm -hmm. Okay, once you're at this stage, what you do, drain it, put it onto a large tray, like this. Okay, you want to put a little bit of olive oil on top. Okay, yeah. So what you do, once you've done that, yeah. give it a good shake, so the pasta is all beautiful and oiled all over, so it doesn't get all sticky. And then what you do, find a cool place. Don't rinse it under cold water. This is a mistake that a lot of people do. They put under cold water, what's gonna happen? All the starch into the pasta goes away and the pasta gets soggy. Just leave it like that to naturally cool it down by itself. And then just before you use it, put it into a basket or put it back in hot boiling water. 30 seconds, pasta is done. Okay? Fantastic. And that's how you do it. Lauren turns her attention back to prepping ingredients. Her main concern, like all our cooks, is can she make a home dish work in a professional kitchen? Well, I'm hoping that my meatballs come as good as they do when I'm at home. Um, I am busy chopping at the moment, so this is a preparation stage, and I'm um, looking forward to the next step. Well, that's just one of today's home-cooked recipe. Done, two more to go. Coming up. A dish that spans two centuries and crossed three continents before finally arriving here. So they went to Vietnam, to Australia, to London. And then now to London. And our three home cooks take on service in a professional kitchen. OK, guys, table number seven. I need three salmon, one meatball, one shepherd's pie. One pasta right now. Two. I need two, and yeah. I need another two after that. And this. another two after Yeah, this. so four in total. Yes, Chef. chef. Welcome back to That's Not Taste Like Home. Today, I'm in central London, where I found three home-cooked dishes with plenty of history, and three cooks desperate to show them off. Who's gonna be next to share their favorite family dish? Our second cook is 29-year-old Scott Malion, a marketing manager from Richmond, London. His home-cooked recipe is the Star Family Three Meat Shepherd's Pie, which has taken three generations to perfect and unusually is made with three types of meat. Scott first cooked this dish age 15 with his mother, but the recipe originates from County Cork in Ireland, where Scott's nan first concocted the dish using basic ingredients. I'm using three different types of meat. 
Um, I'm using minced pork, which is my addition, because it adds a nice texture. And as long as I keep it quite chunky, it's really pleasant to eat. Uh, the lamb has loads of loads of flavour, and again, it's quite light in style. The beef is there for the intensity. I need to finely dice some carrots, some white onions, and some celery. Quick stir. Okay, now that they've sweated off, I'm going to turn the heat up a notch so I can get my meat in. So I just need to brown the meat off now. In the past, it was expensive to get three meats, and to some extent, it still is. But because this is how this is how my nan did it, so I wouldn't want to try and deviate from that anyway. Every week, friends, family would come round to my nan's, to my mum's, to me now, and it's uh, it's expected that I should do the shepherd's pie. So it's got a lot of history, a lot of heritage, a lot of fond memories, uh, memories from when I was a kid. I always loved coming round to my nan's for a nice shepherd's pie, or indeed I'd go round to my mum's house and she'd cook it. And I'd always know it'd be spot on, and it'd be something I'd build up to towards the end of the week. And now I need to add the rest of my ingredients, which is tinned tomatoes. I use smoked paprika because it has a wonderful smoky sweetness and it has a real kind of different dimension to the finished dish. Now I need to add in two whole star anise to give that real aniseedy depth of flavour. Some people might find it a bit exotic to add the star anise, but it's all down to personal taste and this is the way I like to do it. So that's, that's all in. I've got one more ingredient to add, which is my dried herb mix. Two good pinches you want. And then give that one final stir. OK, now I need to leave that and cover it for 40 minutes to an hour on a medium heat and let it do its thing. Oh, crusty. OK, now I need to make up the mashed potato filling using the ingredients I've got here, which I have some sweet and tangy cheddar. My own little take is the parmesan, which gives an extra nutty kind of flavour. My nan and then down to my mum was uh, never made mash in the same way. Uh, mashed potato full stop consisted of this kind of thing. It wasn't just mashed potato, as it were. So adding these kinds of things and these different flavours, textures, all, all add to it and all, all something that I've, I've just continued to do. And that is it. The mashed potato topping is good to go. We don't want to be neat on this one. A preheated oven at 200 degrees, straight in, middle shelf. And that will cook away nicely now for 15 to 20 minutes until it goes nice and crisp on top. Oh, look at that. And here it is, the Star Family Three Meat Shepherd's Pie. That's Scott's delicious version of the humble shepherd's pie. Now Gino wants to find out more about its Celtic heritage. Tell me about this dish. How long has it been in your family? Uh, three generations, so 50, 60 years. Um, three generations, yeah, your grandmother. Yeah. My grandmother, recipe. And okay. then my mother started cooking it, and now obviously me. The shepherd's pie has been around since the 18th century, um, traditionally in England and Scotland. And so obviously now my nan being Irish, it's, it's a bit of everything, so it's a tri-national dish. She was born and raised in County Cork. It was something that she cooked every now and then just for something to have. Then everyone she cooked it for started to think, oh, this is, this is really good, this is really good. So instead of the typical Sunday roast, she would do the shepherd's pie. And then okay. my mum did the same thing, adding the one more ingredient. Which yeah, is? The beef. My nan's recipe was with, okay. with lamb, uh, quite traditional. Then she so added I... the beef, so it became two meats. And then I added the pork. You added so, the pork? Yeah. How, how old were you when you started to get involved with this recipe? I was about 13, 14 when I started to get involved. 13, 14? Um, I'd had it, I had lots of memories younger than that, eating it and enjoying it. It just takes away from my childhood and food being about fun and sitting there with the family eating big, wholesome food. And so I get that every time I cook it and every time I eat it. This actually was the, one of the first dishes that I started to cook and this started my whole kind of love affair with cooking. And this was the first dish that I did and started to do successfully and this opened up my eyes to the, to the world of home cooking. I'm the only one out of the grandkids that actually knows how to make it and really? currently makes it, yeah. <laughs> Why is that? I have no idea. I think people, they may be quite scared to touch a, a historical dish. If Tell me something, what would it mean to you to win today? I mean, it'd be amazing just to do my nan and my mum proud more than anything else because it's been in the family for so long, so much history and heritage with it. I think it just, for me personally, it'd be a great achievement, but more so it's just to, to make my nan and my mum proud. OK, Scott, the perfect mashed potato. Okay. OK. First of all, you put a little bit of salt for seasoning. Yeah. A little bit of white pepper. OK. I don't use black pepper because otherwise you see all those black bits yeah, in the mashed yeah. potato. Okay. White pepper. Okay. It's absolutely 
fantastic for mashed potato. And then, of course, butter. Butter is important. I like to pour butter when it's melted already. Okay? Mm -hmm. So loads of butter goes in there. And you just work the butter slowly, slowly into the mashed potato. And this is going to give you a beautiful shine to the potato. And nice and smooth, no lumps. So mix everything together. Then if you go milk. You can use cream. To be honest with you, I think then it's a bit too heavy. I use milk. Full fat milk goes in there. And again, work the milk into the potato slowly, slowly. So it absorbs and it becomes all beautiful and moist and soft. Now this is the perfect way when you do sausage and mash yeah. or when you want to serve the mashed potato on the side of a dish. Can you see that? Yeah, lovely. Beautiful, smooth. Look at that, shiny. Now, if you want to use this one for a topping, it's not going to work. I'll tell you why it's not going to work, especially with your shepherd's pie, because this is too creamy. Mm. It will soak in. So what you have to do, whenever you do a mashed potato for topping, keep it a little bit drier, a little bit firmer, and then it's absolutely perfect. Job done. OK? Scott gets to work preparing the ingredients for his shepherd's pie filling. With only three hours until service, the pressure is on as our home cooks busily prepare their beloved family dishes for the first time in a professional kitchen. Each cook is hoping that Gino will pick their dish to take pride of place on this restaurant's menu for a month. On the menu today, Lauren's Pecorino family meatballs and Scott's star family three meat shepherd's pie. OK, guys, our menu is almost completed. Two fantastic home-cooked recipes done. One more to go. Our final cook is Anna Siao, a 31-year-old pharmacist who lives with husband Derek in East London. Her family dish is called Gakko Dio, otherwise known as caramelised clay pot salmon. This recipe has been passed down through four generations, remaining unchanged for nearly 200 years. It originated from a small fishing village outside Ho Chi Minh City. So traditionally I come from a fishing village. Um, usually they use catfish, um, but obviously catfish isn't widely available um, in the supermarket. So my mum tend to bought salmon, so that's why we're using today. I think it's just one of those family things, however you would do it. There's always variations, so, um, but this is how my mum used to do it. So obviously we're sh I'm sharing that with everyone here today. It's kind of a, a dish whenever I'm homesick. I would make this, it's quite an easy dish and it's also um, obviously quite cheap as well. So quite often um, it's uh, a dish that um, most Vietnamese families would cook anyways. I'm just going to start cutting the fish into cubes. So the marinade's very simple, there's only a few ingredients. One tablespoon, regular tablespoon of sugar. I think I'll grab the garlic now. So all the garlic that we've crushed. We want two tablespoons of the fish sauce and then one tablespoon of sunflower oil. I usually leave it for 15 minutes because I'm usually in a hurry. The longer you leave the marinade, the better. Whoops. So we just let that sit there for 15 minutes and while that's marinating, I'm just going to uh, cook the rice. Add enough water so that it comes up to about here on the finger. Okay, so now we've got all the ingredients um, ready. I'm going to start making the caramel sauce. Clay pot is great because it actually kind of imparts a nice earthy sort of flavour to the dish. Say about a tablespoon of oil. That just goes in. I'm using brown sugar. Two generous spoonfuls here, a tablespoon. Obviously you don't want the caramel sauce to burn because obviously it's going to destroy the taste of the dish. And so I just add the whole lot in. And the moment you put it in, you can smell the fish sauce, can't you? The village that I come from, we're actually famous for making the fish sauce. Us Vietnamese love our fish sauce. <laughs> I'm going to add another two tablespoons. So now I'm just going to add some water. Basically, you want to add enough water to slightly cover the surface of this layer, this fish layer here. So all we need to do now is basically add some spring onions. I'm just going to add the black pepper, as much as you want. And basically you just let that simmer on a high heat because you want to reduce the sauce down. It takes about maybe 10-15 minutes. So all I'm going to do now is add uh, some coriander. Obviously this is for garnish. Some spring onions. More pepper if you want. I think I'll add a little tiny bit more pepper. 
and as much chilli as you want. And that's the finished dish. So that's Anna's caramelised clay pot salmon, a dish with a story as tasty as it looks. Now, tell me a little bit about this dish, where it comes from, how long it's been in your family. It goes back about 200 years or more. It's gone through oh, four wow. generations. It's uh, travelled 10,000 miles from Vietnam to Australia to London, and it's uh, a family favourite. The dish is actually caramelised salmon that's usually cooked in a uh, classic uh, clay pot. Usually just served with rice, that's all you really need. It's come from my great-grandmother. It's probably gone back more generations before that. It went to Melbourne because my okay. parents fled the war and we settled there. I'm from Melbourne, grew up and born there. And my husband and I just recently moved to London a couple of years ago. So okay. it's travelled basically... So we went to Vietnam, to Australia, to London. And then now to London. Salmon is a, a new addition, um, but basically originally it was cooked from basically any fish, because I come from a fishing village in Vietnam. That's where most of my family, that's my heritage of my family is from. Because I've moved to London, now and again I do get homesick and do miss my mum's home cooking, so whenever I am homesick I do think about this dish. Just reminds me of how like, we would always have dinners together as a family. It would always be family time, like dinner time. What would it mean to you to win today's show? If it does win, I would love for people to have a taste of it because I'll be elated. Basically, I feel like I'm representing all my family right now. Now, Anna, I'm going to show you a very simple tip, and of course, you guys are home as well, okay? How to cook the perfect rice. Okay, just a pre-cooked long grain rice. Okay, what you want to do, the ratio is very simple. One cup of rice goes into a saucepan, like that. We are going to use one full cup of water, cold water, goes on top, and then another half cup. So one and a half cup ratio of water to rice. Once you've done that, so at the moment what you have, you have cold water and rice in a saucepan. We get a little bit of foil, or if you've got a lid for the saucepan, that's absolutely right. You cover it, you put it on top of the heat for two minutes. Then what you do, as soon as two minutes are gone, leave it on the side, another 10 minutes away from the heat, and this is how you get the perfect rice. With only two hours until service, things are hotting up. The three home cooks are busy preparing their dishes, this time for a restaurant full of paying customers. Lauren is now mixing mince, egg and breadcrumbs for the meatballs, but she's still concerned whether her tried and tested formula will be a success. The part of the dish that I'm a little worried about is the actual forming of the meatballs and making sure that they stay together. Scott is about to fry off the vegetables for his shepherd's pie, which will now be topped with Gino's perfect mash, but he's anxious about bringing everything together. I'm quite nervous about the final delivery because that's what it's all about. The most I've ever cooked uh, before today is uh, 10 people, so nothing like today. The delivery at the, at the very end of it, that's the thing I'm most nervous about, like, like you would be. And Anna is busy preparing the vegetables and spices for her dishes. However, she's fearful that a critical part of her recipe could end in disaster. The prep stage is quite easy. I think, if anything, I'm worried about the uh, caramel sauce. I, uh need to get the timing right because I don't want to really burn it. So, you got it, today's menu. Three amazing dishes that have traveled for thousands and thousands of miles just to be here today in this restaurant. But the pressure is on because paying diners are coming in and we're going to prove to them that there's no taste like home. Coming up. Two and two. No, can I have one salmon right now? Our home cooks feel the pressure of a lunchtime service as 50 hungry diners make their orders. I need a two meatball. The heat is on. Orders are coming in faster and faster. And one dish runs into serious trouble. Where are these people? Let me talk to them. <laughs> Welcome back to... That's not taste like home. Today, I'm in Holborn in central London. Now, before the break, we heard about the history of three amazing recipes. But now, it's time to cook them in this restaurant for paying customers. Let's remind ourselves what's for lunch today. 
Lauren Pecorino is cooking her traditional family meatballs. This dish dates back to the early 1900s and has traveled all the way from Naples to New York and now London. This recipe I have in front of me is actually my mom's recipe. It's kept close by so that it reminds me of home and also so I don't forget any major ingredients. Scott Malion is making his star family's three meat shepherd's pie, a dish spanning three generations and over 100 years. Every week, friends, family would come round to my nan's, to my mum's, to me now, and it's, uh, it's expected that I should do the shepherd's pie. And Anna Xiao is making Vietnamese caramelised clay pot salmon, a recipe which has travelled over 10,000 miles in 200 years to become Anna's signature dish. It's kind of a, a dish whenever I'm homesick, um, I would make this. I think it's just one of those family things. This is how my mum used to do it, so obviously wish I'm sharing that with everyone here today. It's almost lunchtime, and as the waiting staff prepare the dining room, a queue of hungry diners has formed outside the restaurant, all eager to try our three home cooks' fantastic recipes. Let's hope that the food lives up to their expectations. So let's go back to the kitchen and see how my home cooks are doing. I think it's going okay. The, the heat is on. I think not having your own utensils and pots, um, that's just a little awkward. Uh, it's pretty hectic, to be honest. Every, this is such a last-minute dish. Uh, I'm second-guessing how things are going. It's pretty stressful. There's a lot going on. Cooking this is a massive, massive honour for me. My mum passed away uh, a few years ago, so it's, uh, it's nice to, to, to really cook this and just do her proud and hopefully she's looking down saying, well done. So, Lauren. Don't forget what I told you about to make sure that they're nice and smooth. Have a look at my one, how smooth it is. Okay, have a look at this one. I can see your finger in there, look. Yes. Can you see that? Yes. You have to remember at the end, after you've done all the pressing, okay, that you need to roll them to make them smooth. Great. Like this. I don't want to see the, uh, uh, your fingerprint, although it's actually quite a good idea to put fingerprints in your meatball. But I think for the paying customer, people that they're going to pay for this, Right? They want to see a beautiful, smooth bowl. Look at that. Beautiful. Now it's better, OK? Great, thank you. Where are we? Right, so I've just added in the last of the stock cubes, crumbling okay. that in. Um, now I need to add the star anise and the smoked paprika. Star anise? Yeah. And smoked paprika <laughs> into shepherd's pie. Indeed. Now tell me a little bit more about that. Well, this was, this was my personal touch. I love, okay. I love smoked paprika, um, generally. And I love star anise, I love the an aniseed, that whole kind of fragrance to it. So I thought, mm, I wonder if this will work in a shepherd's pie. And it does? It does, yeah, with a bit of hesitance to start with. I thought, it takes a bit of getting used to, but all the essentials are there. It's just that little, my little touch to it. I think it'll really go well, for, yeah. Carry on with your little touch. We'll see at the end when I taste it. Thanks, Gino. How are you? Very good. Yeah? You yeah. Look, you look a little bit stressed. What's Me? happened? Well, it's are all last-minute okay? pre pre preparations, really. The last so... minute preparations. You know that yeah. you're going to have to start to serve in about half an hour. I understand. Have you got, this is the marinade? That's the marinade. How long does it have to be marinated for? Technically, the longer the better, but obviously due to time constraints, I've got 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So you put it there, it's going to soak all these flavours. That's right. All right, it smells absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Are you still all nice and calm? Yeah, Are always. you feeling the heat in your back here? So I don't mind it. I come from Australia, so Ah, so you so you used to the hot. Yeah. Well, it's going to get hotter. It's going <laughs> to get hotter, I promise I'm you sure that. It will. Despite the pressure in the kitchen, it's time for lunch. And whether the cooks are ready or not, the restaurant doors are finally opened. With such a fabulous array of dishes, the customers will have a difficult choice to make. So our three home cooks will really have to impress them. We are having some wine today. In 15 minutes, yep. I'm going to start the service. People up there are coming in slowly, slowly. So we're going to start in 15 minutes. Before we do that, what I need from you is a final finished dish for me I want to see how you're going to present it and I want to taste it okay, okay? so you have about one or two minutes maximum so get in there and get me a dish by the end of lunch service Gino will award one dish the honor of being on this restaurant's menu for a month his decision will look at three main criteria cost of ingredients preparation time in the kitchen and the reaction of the diners as the home cooks prepare for Gino's taste test, upstairs some very special customers have arrived. It's very nice to know that Scott's sort of looking to do this kind of thing and uh, we're very proud of him, the fact that he's been chosen to cook 
the meal that's so dear to him, really. It means quite a lot. I mean, it's sort of from his mother's side because it's one of those traditional things and we're very much a traditional family. So to have traditional meals cooked is, is, is uh, very pleasurable. Yeah, it's a tremendous uh, achievement to have got this far. And for her dish to come you know, for a hundred for a hundred years and now be in a little English restaurant, having gone you know, come from Sicily, now in New York, it's terrific. First to take the taste test is Lauren's Pecorino family meatballs. Okay, nice. It looks beautiful. I like the two big meatballs. I like that. I can see why this dish is a popular dish in your family. Mmm. Pasta is nice and al dente. Meatball. For a meatball. Oh, that's a good meatball. Next, it's Scott's star family three meat shepherd's pie. It looks beautiful. Can you see what's happening here all around? Yeah, yeah absolutely okay. spot on. Because what I don't want is the sauce to over go over the mashed potato. What did you put in the mashed potato? There was uh, tangy cheddar cheese, some nice. parmesan, and some chopped spring onions. Chopped spring onions. Mm, I'll tell you something, the parmesan, the cheddar, the spring onions, it comes through beautifully. Oh, good, good, thank you. I have to think the presentation is excellent. Thank you well very done. much. Well Thanks done, good dish, man, thank good dish. And finally, it's Anna's turn with her Vietnamese caramelized clay pot salmon. Anna, look at that. I do that my best. That looks beautiful. Thank that you. looks absolutely beautiful. I'll give you that. Yeah, now, the fish, you made, have you tried it? No, I haven't. No? Remember the secret of a good cook? What it is? It's to make sure that you always try the food before you serve it. If it's not good enough for you, it's not good enough for paying yeah. customer, okay? So make sure that you try. The salmon is cooked to perfection, I have to say. Thank you. Oh, wow. Wow. Have you guys tried this? No, not yet. Not wow. yet. I haven't even tried it. I'll tell you something. The caramelized sugar comes through, fish sauce comes through. It's very, very pretty. Thank you. It's fantastic. Well, I'm going to be having the salmon today because it's different to what I would normally go for. Yeah, I'll get meatballs, you get salmon. Yeah. I was going to go for the meatballs, but I thought, no, I'm going to try the fish today. I had a difficulty deciding between the fish and the shepherd's pie. With all three dishes making the grade, Gino allows service to begin. Thank you very much Thanks. indeed. This is how it works. I call the orders. Whenever I call the orders, I want to hear, yes, chef, or yes, Gino, whatever you want. I need to understand that you understood my order, OK? If you yes. don't answer back, then I will ask the order again until you answer me back. Otherwise, I don't know if you got it. Okay? okay? Yes. Everybody clear? Yes. Yes? Yes, chef. Yes, Fantastic. Yes. Okay, guys, listen to me. Table number two, one salmon, one shepherd's pie. Yes, chef. Remember, guys, this is a celebration of home cooking. So put your heart in it. And let's make sure that everybody understands how much feeling there is in these recipes, okay? Yes, chef. All right, rock and roll. How long before the salmon? Another minute. Lauren, you're having a break down there. Yeah. Are you all right? I think it's going okay. The, the heat is on. Orders are coming in faster and faster. This is going to be a very messy dish. Okay. What we do, get a meatball, and they're going to go on top. You put a little bit of cheese on top, so all the dishes are going to look all the same. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice? Thank you. The pasta, I loved it. I loved the way the two big meatballs with pecorino cheese on top and the basil, that is going well. And Scott, really a masterpiece of a shepherd's pie. Looks great, impressive, rustic, home cooking at its best. It's going pretty well so far. Yeah, it's pretty stressful. There's a lot going on. Thankfully, my dish uh, doesn't need too much finishing touches to it. Unlike Scott and Lauren, Anna's recipe requires her to make each dish to order. So service for her is a real challenge. Have you got more salmons on the go? I've got two more coming up, Two right? more. Yeah. I need two, and yeah. I need another two after and that. And another two after yeah, this. Yeah, so four in total. OK. OK, guys? They have been coming through fast, and hopefully I've uh, also got the hang of it as well, so... Yeah. Finally, Gino is happy and allows the dishes to make their way out of the kitchen and up to the paying diners. That's delicious. That's extremely good. And it's got a cheesy top, which is nice for a shepherd's pie. Yeah. It looks different, looks lovely, smells nice. 
Listen to me, I need three more salmon, yes, one chef. shepherd's pie, and one meatball. And remember, keep smiling. Happy cooks makes happy foods. Come on, two meatballs. Come on, one pasta right now. Salmon ready? Coming up. Would you serve it like that? You need to wipe that dish. You need to wipe that dish. I think something is burning in the back, Anna. Lunch is well underway, and our cooks are managing to keep up with the hectic pace of running service in a professional kitchen. One meatball, one salmon. Yes, chef. chef. Very nice, full of flavour. Definitely recommend it. I can't believe that it's like a homemade recipe because of all the flavours in it. You'd think it was just like brewed up now, but then to hear that it's been around for ages is just phenomenal. It's so good. <laughs> well, I went for shepherd's pie because I thought, you know, you, you kind of know what you get with shepherd's pie or you think you know what you're getting. So I thought, I'll see what they can do differently with that. And I'm really surprised by how different the flavours are. It's really packed full of flavour, unlike any shepherd's pie I've had before. It's really, really tasty. Anna's husband, Derek, has enjoyed the salmon many times before, but never in a chic London restaurant. It feels like, yeah, I'm eating a Michelin star version of, <laughs> of her dish. It's, it's amazing to have it presented this way and just tasting this way, yeah. It's unbelievable. OK, guys, we are halfway through. How are we feeling? Good. Good. Yeah, everybody right? Yes. Anna, are you happy? Very happy. Scott? I'm happy. Yeah? Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling the heat. You're feeling the heat. It's getting hot, is it? It's getting hot. Oh, well, we haven't finished yet. And the worst is not over, guys. The worst is not over. But for Scott, the worst is just about to happen. Chef? What's up? 7 Eleven. Yeah. Shepherd's pie is lovely, but could be more meaty. They had better. They had better? They had better. Chef. Where? Wow. Where they had it better? Well, probably in a pie restaurant. In a pie restaurant? Where are these people? Let me talk to them. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. Everything OK? Everything Signora? Good. Yes, thank you. What a pleasure. How is your food so far? It's not meaty enough. OK. It's got beef, it's got pork in there, OK? And it's got lamb. It's got three different meats. What he did, he put in a little touch of smoked paprika. Paprika. That, yes, mm -hmm. that's what okay. I would say. So you have a little bit of a kick, so it's not the usual classic yeah. one. I personally don't agree that it needs more meat. Right. Is anything else we can do for you? Do you want to try the pasta? Right. Okay, yes. we got a deal. Yeah. I'm going to bring you some pasta. Mwah. Ciao. The diner is satisfied with the promise of Lauren's pasta, so Gino heads back to the kitchen to relay the news to Scott. What happened to the shepherd's pie? I think. It's good, but and I think it's got a beautiful paprika, which is your little touch, and that's what food is all about. The fact that you're putting your own touches in the recipe, I think it's fantastic. But a customer up there, a lady, she said, well, this is not what a shepherd's pie is all about, yeah. because it's got the uh, spice of the paprika, the star and seed. She wanted more of a lamb flavor as well. Of course, you put pork in there, yeah. and you put a beef. Listen. In food, with food, you can never make everybody happy. There is always one who's going to say, I wish I could have done it like this, or I wish I could have had it like that. Yeah. Okay, so don't worry about it. No, no, it's fine. a good dish, and I want more. How are we doing? It's very good. Any more complaints? Good. No more complaints, chef. Good. Only good. happy people. Happy people. Good. <laughs> Guys, everything is going all right. Happy people upstairs. So keep up with the good work. Service is nearly over for the three home cooks, and the food seems to be going down well with the diners. You know what, my three cooks in the kitchen here, they worked so hard, and I'm so pleased for them, because they really done their family proud. All three have been absolutely fantastic, but which one is going to make it on the menu? Coming up. And today's winner of There's No Taste Like Home is... Okay, guys, listen to me. Table number two, one salmon, one shepherd's pie. Chef Gino De Campo is on a mission to prove there's no taste like home. Are you enjoying yourself? Yes, chef. He's found three home cooks with three historic family recipes. Together, they've taken over a restaurant in central London. It's a full house, and as a result, the orders have come through thick and fast. Very hot, very cramped, very small. 
And our three home cooks have risen to the challenge. Is that what you were expecting or you were expecting a walk in the park? Service is nearly over and the cooks are all hoping Gino will choose their dish as the winner and secure a place on the restaurant's menu for a month. Come on, guys, the last two orders, OK? Everybody with me? Yes, sir. Good. Three step is nice, chef. All right, guys, the last table out of the way. All right, well done. Well done. Yeah. Anna, how did you feel it gone? Very good, I think I did my family proud. Yeah? Yeah. Would you do it again? Do you know, I would. I've always loved a passion for cooking and I've always had respect for chefs, so I, can, I think I could take yeah. the heat. Yeah. Nice, sir, nice. And what about you, Scott? No, no, really, really happy. I just hope that the, the paying customers enjoy it as much as I do and all my friends and family do, so, yeah, I'm really, of really happy. Of course they did, of course. And the pasta, are you happy with those meatballs? Uh, I am. I had a lot of fun and I hope the customers were happy as well. Of course they will, of course. Guys, you really, really done well today. So well done. Well done, well done, well done. Well done. Service is finished, and our cooks have done all they can to secure their dish a place on the restaurant's menu for a month. It's now up to the diners, the restaurant's head chef, and the manager to help Gino make his difficult decision. So guys, what do we think about today's menu? I ordered the three meat shepherd's pie. It's really nice, very tasty, smelt beautiful actually when I opened it up. Really nice. Really good choice, the salmon. I'm really glad I chose it. It was between the meatballs and salmon. Good combination between the rice and the texture of the salmon and the flavours. Mwah! Beautiful. Very nice indeed. Full compliments to the chef. Pecorino meatballs, perfect. It just uh, tastes wonderful. It reminds me of my mother, where she used to cook it. Well, they seem to have enjoyed them, but which dish will Gino pick? Will it be Lauren Pecorino's family meatballs, a fantastic pasta dish that originated in southern Italy, travelled to New York in the 30s, and is now lovingly cooked by Lauren at home in London? I'm doing it in honour of my grandmother that she's going to be 99 years old and still making the meatballs, so um, I think it, it's, uh, it would be an honour for her. Or will it be Scott Malion with his star family Three Meat Shepherd's Pie, a hearty dish first cooked by his nan in Ireland's County Cork over 70 years ago? I mean, it'd be amazing just to do my nan and my mum proud more than anything else, because it's, it's been in the family for so long, so much history and heritage with it. I think it just, for me personally, it'd be a great achievement, but more so it's just to, to make my nan and my mum proud, yeah. Or Anna's 200-year-old caramelised clay pot salmon recipe, a dish first cooked by her ancestors in a tiny fishing village just outside Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. If it does win, I would love for people to have a taste of it because I'll be elated. Basically, I feel like I'm representing all my family. So, guys, did you enjoy your food? Yeah! Good. Now, let me introduce you to the three home cooks. They're right here. Come on, guys, come in. Oh, are you all right? Good, 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 good. Are you well? Fantastico. Fantastico. Come on, they're done. You guys, you guys have done a fantastic job, I have to say. The dishes looked great, and I can see that there was a lot of passion in there, a lot of soul, right? Unfortunately, there can only be one winner. In my eyes, you are all winner because these recipes, they've been in your family for years and years and years. And to come here in a restaurant and serve all these lovely people, you have to consider yourself already winner, okay? And today's winner of There's No Taste Like Home is... Anna Salman. Now tell me, how do you feel? I'm so happy, like you wouldn't believe. Well, I'll tell you something, we had a lot of compliments for all the three dishes, but yours in particular one, because it was very light, well presented. Uh, and I have to say, I know that I gave you a hard time down in the kitchen down there, okay? But it was all in a good intention, because I it wanted was, to make sure that your dish... So. I, know, I wanted to make sure that your dish looked beautiful just the way you presented to me, and it tasted fantastic and really, really well done. You should be very proud, and all your family are going to be really proud of you. So thank you again. Thank you.
This is your plate. You are the winner of today. There's no taste like home. Okay, so make thank sure you so look much. after the plates. Yeah, that, 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 that is yours. Enjoy. Definitely, thank you. Wow. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> It was all about sharing the dish that my grandmother and even generations before us. Um, so it's kind of, you know, just representing the family really was more important. I'm very happy for Anna. Uh, we had a lot of fun. I think her recipe was exquisitely presented and I think she deserved to win. I think it was wonderful. Very worthy winner. Her dish was superb and tasted, tasted beautiful. Um, so I'm actually really happy with the outcome. It's the experience that makes it, I think, but more than happy with who won. I'm really over the moon right now. I didn't really expect any of this, so um, yeah, speechless right now. Well, congratulations to Hannah. The salmon dish was absolutely mwah, buonissimo. But don't forget to join me next time where I'm going to find three more home cooks and the only thing that they want to prove to you that there's no taste like home. Now, if you want to try the winning dish yourself or perhaps you want details of the recipes featured on today's show, the only thing you're going to have to do is to go to itv.com forward slash food.